So love is the ultimate light for the heart. Now broadly, we could say that Ayodhya is like our heart. Ram is the lord of our heart. And we are all like the residents of Ayodhya. So we all want the Lord to be present in our hearts. Now we see that the Ramayana uh, indicates what has later been analyzed by psychologists as typical story patterns. There's a peaceful situation and there's sudden disruption. And then there's a restoration of order. So the peaceful situation is in, is in Ayodhya where Ram, is, Ram appears and grows and flourishes, becomes a powerful prince and is about to become the king. And then there is trauma. And then uh, Ram is exiled from Ayodhya. And then eventually he comes back. So from our hearts also, at one level, the Lord is always present because he is the Paramatma. But although he's present, his presence is not sensed by us. We don't feel his presence much. So in that sense... He is uh, no longer present in our hearts. He's exiled from our hearts and we want to get him back. So that will be the broad theme we will take today. So here we see that in some ways, many of the depictions of Krishna Leela and Ram Leela are remarkably similar. Now, Srimad Bhagavatam, as you know, after it was, it was spoken by Shukadeva Goswami, written by Vyasudev, after that, it became spectacularly popular. And then even Ram Leela was modeled that way. And there is Adhyatma Rama and some other books, which describe Ram's pastimes in a similar way in which the 10th Canto Krishna Leela is described. So here we see Ra Ayodhya was like a paradise. The four brothers were living happily with their three mothers. And there was amity, there was joy. And everybody loved everyone else. And Ram was the center of attention. Ram, he was the lord of the heart for everyone. And now when we talk about, uh, we light our heart. What, what lights our heart actually? The heart does not have any mechanical switch by which you can light it. But what lights it is actually love. And that love is manifested in a magnificent way here. As Ram grew up, he became an archer. As I said, in some of the poet, some of the artistic depictions, Ram is depicted as if having a complexion. Now here you will see this is Krishna. That there are some level. Normally we don't see. Of course, Krishna has a bow and arrow, and this is Krishna's complexion. But some artists have depicted Ram in ways similar to Krishna. So here you see. The complexions are slightly different here. So ultimately the Lord's complexion, Ram is sometimes said to be green in complexion. But actually Ram's complexion is materially indescribable. Whatever colors we use, even for Krishna, bluish black, those colors are simply indicative. So here we see their mothers are serving them, but all of them are re rejoicing. Amiably they are living happily. This is hand. There's no joy greater than the, for, for Dashrat, greater than to see all his sons flourishing. They all grew together very happily. It is an abode of love and joy in Ayodhya. So what is the light of love? Is that, okay, it is, li a line, it is Ram's upcoming succession. So he was, when that news came up, that Dashrath had decided to Dashrath had decided at that time to become, to retire and to hand over the kingdom to Ram. There was no joy, there was no limit to that joy. Yes, Ram's presence was joy. In fact, the very word Ram means Ramati, Ramayati. That one who, Ramayati, one who rejoices and who helps others rejoice. That is Ram. So the whole of Ayodhya was lit with celebration, lit with joy, lit with love. And the festival of lights, in one sense, mark the return of Ram. But lights are central to all kinds of celebrations. And in this case, Ram, Ram's uh, uh, coronation, Ram's succession and eventually coronation, he, that everybody was celebrating. So this is for all of us, you know, in our inner world, if you want to light it, it is actually love that lights it. It is love that reveals all that is wonderful in the heart, 
love that reveals what is and exposes that what is what is dreadful in the heart and helps us remove it so now when we talk about love the soul is we are talking about love uh, now what is what the soul's nature is to love our deepest longing is to love and be loved and the soul has that natural effulgence the soul is at one level it is luminous it is atmadruk it is uh, the soul is the inner seer and the soul has consciousness which is like light the soul's if <coughs> effulgence however is covered by impurities and that's why uh, people often behave in ways we ourselves behave in ways that may not be very loving so love is not just the pure state of existence of the heart but love is also the means for purifying the heart how does love purify it is the ultimate purification prayer it is the ultimate illumination when love light is the heart in the bhagavad gita krishna says that it is his love which lights our heart tesham agyan jamtamaha nashayam yatma bhavasto gyan deepe namasvatah so the diwali in the heart the lighting of the heart is done by krishna's mercy when we direct our love toward him then by the mercy of the lord he lights our heart so that uh, what is dark we can remove and what is uh, unnecessary he can the, the light which is he can we can drive it out he burns it away so love is the purifier and is also the purified state of the heart now when we talk about purification why does love need purification uh, why why do we need purification because now there are many things which distort our love in this world so the purification we will uh, so ayodhya was a state where everybody was purely loving the lord but there was a disruption we will talk about the disruption shortly now in our hearts in a pristine state our heart will also be like ayodhya but presently it is not the lord doesn't reign over there supreme as the object of love because of the impurities so the purification doesn't come by hating the impure so much that we drive it out i don't want this here i don't want this anger i don't want this lust i don't want this greed get out of my heart no it, we can't drive out the impure from the heart but what we can do is when we love the pure so much that the impure gets crowded out that the the pure could mean the the devotees who are pure or devotees who are seeking to be pure the lord is various manifestations which are pure and purifying we may love the holy name we may love the shastras we may love the deities we may love the sacred songs and mantras so pure so it is love that purifies so this is love is the purifier and love is the pure state like bhakti is the means and bhakti is the end so the creed to light the heart is to evoke love in the heart and bhakti is the process for evoking that love and so to the extent we practice bhakti diligently we are actually on the path to lighting our heart with love 